you write that as r to the negative one. That's right. Um, and then, so we take the integral of that. Right. Um, and so it would be. Now, if you try to use the normal rules for taking integrals here, they're not going to work because you're going to end up um, dividing by zero, I think. There's a oh, special yeah. antiderivative for one over r. That's right. This is an antiderivative. There's a good chance it would show up on the test. You might put this in your cheat sheet. The antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. The normal rules for taking antiderivatives wouldn't work here because you'd end up dividing it by 0. OK. Now remember that we need to evaluate this antiderivative at the top and the bottom limits and then subtract them. And there's a way we can simplify this as well. Um, what would be another way to write the difference between two logs? Um. You remember that the difference yeah. between two logs is the lo Am I getting this right? Um, yeah, the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. And we can even simplify this because now the r's will cancel. So all of that was to figure out the change in the potential. Generally, we're not going to try to figure out the level of the potential. All we care about is how the potential is changing from here to here. And we didn't worry about the sign either. We just know that the magnitude of the potential is changing by this formula. So this was a case where we had to do differentiation because we couldn't take E out of the integral because E was changing as we changed the radius. OK, well, now what? Try working that out on paper. You may as well be specific here and say that we're working with delta u and delta v. We know that a lot of the time we just use the symbol v to stand for delta v, but here I'll try to be more careful. We just figured out delta v between the initial and the final points. What are we going to plug in for q naught? Because um, our test charge here is the electron. Mm -hmm. And the charge of the electron is e. <coughs> Good.
here's how we should think about this. Yeah, but we're not going to have to use these equations. So let's see. Let's think about what the electron is doing. Now, is the electron going where it wants to go or where it doesn't want to go? Yeah, good. So is its potential energy increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. We didn't. So that's why I say we don't need this negative sign here to find the change in the potential energy. Because we know this is going where it wants to go, in the direction of uh, the way the electric force is pushing it, we know that this represents a decrease in the potential energy. So we know the potential energy is decreasing by this amount. Mm -hmm. So is the kinetic energy going to increase or decrease? Yeah, and by what amount is the kinetic energy going to increase? By the potential energy. By the change in the potential energy. So we don't need to worry about the initial and final points for the energy. All we really care about is the change in the energy. So what we can say here is that any energy that's lost from potential energy has to go into kinetic energy. So we can say that the change in the potential energy will tell us the change in the kinetic energy. And if we focus on magnitudes, these will be equal. We know that one of these is going down and one is going up, but they're going to be equal in magnitude. And we just figured out the change in energy. That's E lambda natural log of 2 over 2 pi epsilon 0. Uh, what do we know about k initial? It's 0. Because they told us we're being released from rest. So in this case, we are using final and initial points. But over here, we're just using the change in the energy. So it's easy to get confused about that. All right, so that uh, dropped out. All right, good. Um, so then we know M. Right. So we solve for V. Good. So kinetic energy is 1 half. What symbol should we use for M? Um, ME. Yeah, we want to use the same symbols they gave us. And V, we don't know. So that's 1 half mv squared. Good. Gotta be careful here not to confuse all the different types of E's. So let's see, you got a little regular lowercase e in the numerator. Lambda natural log of 2 divided by So we can cancel this two in the numerator with this two in the denominator. That gives us E lambda natural log of two. Did you lose that? Oh yeah, I lost the E there. E lambda natural log of two, and in the denominator I've got what? Pi M E epsilon zero. Pi M E epsilon zero, right? And you don't want to confuse this E symbol with this epsilon symbol. Those are two different things. So What's the answer to the question? I guess this is the answer to the question. The speed will be little e times lambda times natural log of 2 divided by pi, mass of the electron times epsilon 0, taking the square root of that whole big thing. All right, so yeah, there's a lot of tricky things here. Um, when you're using conservation of energy, a lot of the time you don't need the levels of the energy. All you need is the changes. What we saw here, we didn't really need to worry about the, the, the formula getting the right sign here because it was clear to us that the potential energy would be decreasing. Um, and in fact, it was better not to work with signs at all. We could just say that the magnitude of this change has to equal the magnitude of this change. 
any energy that's lost from potential has to go into uh, the kinetic energy. 